And yes, as the title suggests, this is my first five star book of the year and it's not a Tamora Pierce book. this is Mary over here at Images on the Page. Today I'm going to be doing a review for A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Sorry for if you see this blue fluffy thing. Wally's over here being a menace and really wanting to play. So as the title and my intro suggested, I gave this a five star. This was absolutely phenomenal. Catherine over at Literary Prince described it as a warm and fluffy fan fiction and she couldn't have been more right. Um, I'll link the video she talked about it in down below in the timestamp for kind of where you can find it. So a quick synopsis is it's kind of it's about Rosemary Harper who is who has changed her identity and is running from her past. She joins the crew of the Wayfarer and they make wormholes. I know in another video I said black holes but it's wormholes. Um, they tunnel wormholes between like planets and places people want to go so that it's a faster travel than like however long it actually takes to get there. Days or years or... I mean I don't quite understand their measure of time. And it is very much like um, one of the family AU fan fictions where everyone is just like a misfit family where everyone's so different and they're all different species and yet they are friends and family and they get to know each other and it's just so fun like the whole time i was reading it i just felt like i was wrapped in a warm and fluffy blanket or a massive hug from someone i love very dearly it was just awesome the representation in this was phenomenal i mean there i mean on the ship alone there are at least four five sorry there are five different species who all have different jobs and it's like never toted as like one species being the best or better than others like they all have their strengths and weaknesses and it's just it was so cool to be able to see from these different perspectives and you can tell that Becky Chambers I mean her imagination is just out of this world because she created all these societies and social constructs for these races or for these species on this ship and not including the ones that we meet that aren't on this ship and it's just mind-blowing. She also does a mi an amazing job of like switching POV um, point of views. I was never really once confused when we were in someone else's head and they were all very distinct characters. People. They're all very distinct people because they all had their flaws and they had their redeeming qualities and so they felt like real people and like some of the characters Corbin for one like I didn't like him but I don't think you're supposed to like him um because that's just who he is and it's just the atmosphere on the ship is wonderful now the kind of main character I mean we follow her timeline her arc the most um but I mean we do definitely interact with the other characters and their backstories she felt a little a little bland to me um she was a little bit Tone, I guess bland is the wrong word. She was a little bit toned down than the rest of the crew, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because the other crew is very dynamic and loud, especially Kissy. So I better, I can, I can try naming all the characters. So there's Rosemary who boards the ship as basically a clerk. There's Kissy who is one of the um, engineers. There is Jenks who is one of the computer engineer slash, um, computer tech slash engineer. There is Ashby, who's the captain. Sidris, who's the pilot. Ohan, who's the navigator. Corbin, who kind of takes care of their fuel, which is algae. Um, don't quite get how that works, but they're, all the ships are run by algae. And so he has to like cultivate that. And then there's Dr. Chef, who is the doctor, medic, and the chef. It's kind of an interesting combination. And it's just, I mean, it was so interesting to see all these different species and cultures interact and getting to see how they, how they deal with each other being of some, some of them of being of such different social cultures. Like Sissix is an Andrisk and Andrisks are very touchy, is not the right word, are very 
touch-based and affectionate. And so when we get to go see Andrus um, Sissek's family, it's kind of like a shock to Rosemary and Ashby because of how openly affectionate they are. And then there is a female-female relationship in it, which was so awesome, but I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want to give it away. But there's also relationships for, between different species in there. Um, it's, it was just so good, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who, I mean, who if you don't even like sci-fi, because like sci-fi is, I think this is the first sci-fi book I've ever actually listened, read to all the way through, or even picked up. And it was just so much more than that. Like, yeah, they had all to do with ships and different planets and aliens and stuff like that, but it was more about the people, more, more about the personalities on this ship than anything else. And it was just, especially if you listen to it on audiobook, the lady who reads it, her first name I think is Rachel, has this phenomenal, phenomenal ability to do the different voices. Um, I sometimes have issues when females read and it's like a male heavy cast um, because a lot of females can't drop their voices low enough or do a cadence low enough to mimic male, but she does an awesome job of disting distinguishing all the voices, even though there's multiple female characters and male characters and non-binary characters, and it's, so it's just, it's so well done, all of it. And the cover is so pretty, at least this cover is, and I would highly check it out. So until the next video, ta-ta for now!